Adam22 from No Jumper has decided to scrap all the shows on No Jumper, with the exception of, as he says here on the screenshot, with the exception of No Jumper News and Weekly. Yeah, no, uh, no, with the exception of the Tuesday show. That's the only show that's staying. So Adam22 has decided to scrap every single show underneath No Jumper umbrella except the Tuesday show. So this is a really big deal because it means a lot of shows, a lot of personalities won't be on screen as much as we saw them in the past. And it definitely represents a change in direction for No Jumper and is quite possibly a reflection of where they currently are and the fact that he hasn't been able to regain or kind of, you know, get back the momentum that he had when all T-Rail, AD, all those guys were still at No Jumper. Or maybe this is the right decision going forward anyway and they should have done this, a, 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 you know, a, ages ago. Who fucking knows? Let's play the clip and see what No Jumper, sorry, see what Adam Tony 2 has to say about the whole situation because I'm fascinated to know how he's going to try to, you know, fix this and make this work. Doing it on Snapchat. Uh, so anybody who's thinking about ripping this and putting it on any other platform, don't even think about it. Anyway, Snapchat exclusive. Uh, I'm making some very big changes in terms of No Jumper. As of today, or as of tomorrow, the news, no jumper news, it's over. I'm surprised by that, to be fair. I'm surprised Adam is canceling No Jumper News because I thought No Jumper News was probably their best show post AD, T Rail, Duno, House Phone, Blasey, you know, exit. I thought that show was the one that was keeping the roof up and keeping them somewhat relevant and it was quite entertaining to watch too because it's a different cast of people they're covering you know daily news topics in hip-hop and culture in general and it's a bit of a fun show an easy show to keep on in the background for me it passes the can you listen to it in the background test without having to like change youtube channel i think it kind of works pretty well so i'm surprised he's not keeping that but then again um recently he started to have loads of people on the news and sometimes I feel like the people on the news, I'm not too sure if he actually even booked them or if they just invite themselves or something. So there's just too many people on there. Um, if he is booking them, then he's paying people a lot of money for videos that probably aren't generating enough money to cover everyone's salaries. So everyone's getting paid a lot to do the news every day. But the, you know, jumper news videos, what, for the most part, they might reach above 60K views, which probably isn't enough to kind of justify keeping them all on board. So, you know, to some extent, it's, it's a sad decision, but I guess if you really get down to numbers, it probably makes sense. The Monday show, the Wednesday show, and the Thursday show also are over. I've decided that I really want to focus No Jumper. So I will be continuing to do the Tuesday show with Lush and Brick Baby. I will... which, which, ironically enough, the Tuesday show with Lush and Brick Baby is actually the best show on that platform. The dynamic and the chemistry they all have really works well. Um, Lush is just as kind of lame as he is sometimes, as kind of pathetic as it was for him to run back to Adam-22, considering everything he said to him, considering how he was treated, considering how the exit played out. It's kind of pathetic, but yeah, let's be honest, Lush is a good employee. Lush is a good fit for No Jumper. He fits them very well, especially now that he's relapsed, he fits them even better now. He's obviously very um, prone to crashing out and saying crazy shit, especially alongside Comparator. But that show is actually pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. It's actually better than the Wax show and maybe even Sharp show, which was meant to be good and then kind of fell off. So I'm not surprised he's keeping that. Continue to do as many interviews as possible. I'm going to have other people on the platform continuing to do interviews. Everybody from, you know, Almighty, Sharp, Rick. I just talked to all these guys, Flacco. Um, we're still going to work together on doing interviews and, you know, doing like repeat guest type interviews where I, you know, have people on uh, multiple times to talk about different things that are going on in the news, everything like that. But this decision has really been brought on primarily, I guess, as a business decision. And I, I say that to say, you know, what's funny about this business decision. He, he put all those people on or signed them all on and brought them all on to sort of like prove to everybody that he wasn't down bad when all those guys left. 
And obviously that wasn't the case because he was always complaining about the money and complaining that the shows weren't making enough when those guys are on, which is something you have to think about, right? Those guys, AD, t all those dudes were very popular. They were the ones that kind of breathed new life back into No Jumper and kind of were the ones that were getting it popping again. But he was complaining that those shows weren't pulling in enough views to the point where I think one of the reasons why him and AD kind of fell out was because Adam kind of felt like AD wasn't tapping into his roller decks of like celebrity friends enough to get more celebs and more well-known people and rappers and shit on No Jumper to boost their views and kind of get them back cracking again and I guess AD probably didn't feel comfortable reaching out to his contacts but then ultimately I think later down the line we found out that a lot of people just didn't fuck with No Jumper because of Adam mostly um, and they just didn't want to be associated with even if AD was there someone they did fuck with so I think if he was not happy with those guys and their views and the money they were bringing in there's no chance that these new guys were also doing poor compared to the other dudes were kind of keeping the lights on. It kind of makes you think all those times that, you know, Adam was flexing on the gram and showing the numbers and the views. That was all a cope, obviously, to kind of get back at those guys for leaving the way they did. But in behind the scenes, the business has probably been bleeding for a while. And again, it's more proof to me similar to the whole Joe Rogan conversation that he always has whenever he goes to the, your mum's house to have a podcast. I just think in general, all these guys have overcomplicated things. They've all overcomplicated things. It's not that deep. You don't need to have a million people working under your network um, umbrella to make a platform work. Like, no jumper should always be about the interviews anyway that Adam22 kind of built the platform on. And it should also be about having maybe regular weekly shows. And that's about it. But only two or three. You don't need to have like seven or eight with these random people that no one gives a fuck about. Especially when the shows aren't that good quality anyway. Most of the shows, um, you know, with the exception, again, of the Tuesday show, the exception of the fucking No Jumper News, were fucking garbage. Um, a lot of the A lot of the hosts weren't really putting in the amount of effort needed to make the shows fun one example being sharp sharp recently has really fallen off i'm not too sure if it's a drama with that girl that kind of caused some things but sharp fall off has been insane to watch he went from being a big draw um, at no jumper to now being somebody that a lot of people kind of mock and take the piss out of and i also feel like whenever i tune into no jumper he's kind of just calling he's kind of just sitting back chilling and almost like clocking in clocking out he's not really caring as much so I think Adam probably noticed that. He noticed a lot of people were getting a free ride and the money wasn't coming in to make it sustainable. And he decided, you know what? Let's just pull the plug overall. I've been talking to my business manager a lot over the course of the past few weeks, taking a real deep dive into how the channel is doing, how much content we're creating and taking a look at like what the true cost of creating stuff like the news is. And have basically just come to the conclusion that it makes more sense for No Jumper to produce less content and be a little bit more focused with us. Or just pay people less. They can still do No Jumper news, but just have a, a, not a rotating cast, but just have two or three people or two people at most. It doesn't need to be like seven or eight people sitting on the, on the chairs, especially with Josh being like the third mic behind the camera shit. You don't need to have seven or eight people. There's just too much. At one point they had what, the two couches, and there's two people sitting there on the before that back table was reserved for one person or like drop-ins then it became like a permanent table with like three people just too many people you know claiming you know filing invoices and wanting to get paid and might make a name for themselves and just making the show unfocused and a bit of a mess they could still go back to doing it so i wouldn't be surprised if adam 22 is doing this to clear the decks i'm going to cancel the show except the tuesday show but then little by little he's going to reintroduce everything he kind of got rid of in like a more you know dialed down way with less people on it so he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to feed so many mouths smaller team a smaller number of employees etc and to just you know be a little bit more focused you know i look at a lot of my peers i look at vlad obviously vlad has kind of always been like the og as far as i'm concerned in terms of uh this whole youtube content space and when I look at Vlad, I think that he kind of does it the smartest way possible. Hey, yo, bronze, bronze arm view. What are you talking about, bro? The the streams look fine on my end. It's not buffering at all. I've got it loaded up on my phone. Everything. What do you mean your stream's still so slow playing videos? What are you talking about? I've got this. I've got the stream up on my phone. It looks perfectly fine. The true cost of making no jumper news, bro. You act as if it's production value out the ass. It's just morons sitting in the same damn set. 
Fuck exactly. out of here. Exactly, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay. NJ Ranger, I get the feeling you're not a big fan of Adam 22. <laughs> that comment had a bit of spice in it, my friend. That comment had a bit of spice in it. Eh? I get the feeling. I get the feeling. I get the feeling. I get the feeling you're not a fan of Adam 22, my friend. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Big up Z, big up Z. You need someone to help film, edit, another to make social media content and guess if needed. Honestly, three or four people is enough. I wonder what what do you what do you guys think happened? Like what was the cause that started this whole trend of people that have very successful YouTube channels where they could just keep churning out content and raking in the fucking millions for themselves and a small group of people to then start to expand and make it into like a network thing. I never understood this, especially when the guests or the hosts weren't that compelling. Like most people don't really, you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't understand, like, especially when Joe Rogan's model has been proven to work over the years. The Joe Rogan model of having the same person on the show all the time with just one guy helping him out and shit and maybe one behind the scenes, small team, kind of concentrates all the money to really a small group of people and you just keep churning out really good quality content, it, fast turnaround also. It went from that to just suddenly now everybody want to pretend like they're MTV, pretend like they've got a fucking big production company. It's like, what? Which is like, if he wants to have a conversation with somebody, he just calls them in, pays them their rate, and then they do the conversation he doesn't really have like consistent co-hosts obviously i'm still gonna have consistent co-hosts i'm still gonna do the tuesday show with brick and lush because i still enjoy you know building that camaraderie and everything like that but as far as like just trying to pump out so much content and doing two hours of the news every day and two hours every night you know I, I, even like someone like brick i just had the conversation with brick about the no statement show on Wednesday and like he totally gets it and if anything he was kind of like bro I didn't really feel like I was ready to do my own podcast in the first place I just took it on because you suggested it you believed in me and you know like honestly all these guys from almighty to Flacco to sharp to brick I seen all these guys grow a shitload as the years have gone by doing content on the channel they've grown a shitload but they're not good enough to hold down their own shows are they that's the funny thing They've all grown a shitload, but they're not good enough to make it make sense to hold down their own shows. That's a funny thing. And it goes to show that those guys that he left before who he mistreated, the ADs, the T-Rails and shit, I know, it, I know he's not all his fault, but he did take those guys for granted because one thing that those guys were was that they were able to hold down a show. They made shows entertaining. They made shows fun. People were really kind of invested in them. So much so that they're now following them on their own platforms. So it, it shows it's not that easy to replace people. I think him and Joe Budden. Joe Budden's another one too. Joe Budden, if he fucks up these guys he has now, he's going to realise how hard it is to actually fill in those seats with people that people care about. Because he kind of got lucky with this new group of people after new Rory and Moore, um, or Rory and Moore kind of got, got fired. He's got lucky with this current group because two of them contain friends of his who have been friends for a long time, who are also very um, comfortable in front of a camera, which is Ice and Ish. And obviously Melissa Ford got added and whatever else. But if Joe fucks up these current people he has now, he'll also run into the same issue that Adam 22 did. It's not that easy to find good people to hold down those shows, especially if you're doing so many so, so often channel and like you know somebody like almighty i was just gassing him up i'll say it here too because i believe it. it was just that i've seen him grow a lot as an interviewer okay i got cut off there anyway i was just saying all about almighty is that you know he's somebody who i've seen grow a shitload as a interviewer and content creator and he has like an amazing ear slash just like a and r mindset for new talent you know he's paying attention on a level that i really look up to and I need people around me like him and Remo, et cetera, to like really help keep me tapped in with exactly what's going on in the culture and everything like that. So this has nothing to do with me being, you know, against any of the hosts on the channel. If anything, it's interesting he said that. I've long thought, and I think Z actually echoed some of the thoughts in the comments. I've long thought recently as well. No Jump has kind of outgrown Adam in a good way. If he was smart, he'd actually take a step back and allow the people that he hires to be more of the face of the company. No one really tunes in for Adam 22 interviews anymore. 
that reputation of him being a good hip hop interviewer is kind of gone. All the new kids are not going on his platform. They're going on Montreality. They're going on Our Generation Next. They're going on um, what's that other one? NF NFR and shit. There's all these other platforms that they're going on, but they're not really running to no jumper for that interview anymore. That's not the thing, you know. So if that is the case, you might as well get those other dudes to kind of front your shows. And then you just play the background role. He doesn't need to be front and center anymore. I don't think so. Um, it's not very necessary. But I think, you know, unfortunate or fortunately, unfortunately, he does have, he's a bit of a narcissist and does have a need to be seen and be heard. So that's probably why he's still on under no jumper. But he doesn't, you know, the channel doesn't really need him. That's a funny thing. Thing. I just had the conversation with all of them and they all took it in stride and, and understood where I was coming from and realized that, you know, it's just a straight business decision. So this is a big development. You know, I look at like a lot of people, my peers in the space, and I, I look at myself and I'm like, damn, I spent the last however many years trying to really build No Jumper up as like a network where we could be producing a huge amount of content. And just over the last couple of weeks from just having these conversations, I just realized this isn't really what I want to spend the next 10 years of my life doing in terms of and let's be fair too the content isn't that interesting it's just a bunch of niggas sitting in front of microphones talking about the same topics the shows aren't different they kind of overlap with topics they overlap with type of guest they're not really structured there's a ton of bad podcasting i wonder if adam got fed up watching the ceo podcast with dw flame i like dw he seems like a cool dude but he was taking the piss with that show. Him and P Nice. One episode I remember checking out, they were ordering food. Like they ordered legitimately DoorDash. The guy actually came and handed it to them while they were sitting down and they were literally eating midway through the like, bro, like having a fucking munch. And these are niggas. So they were quiet while they were eating. Like it just there's like loads of quiet parts. Loads of dead air. So can, yo, these guys are claiming a salary or invoicing and they're spending most of their time just eating on camera nah and smoking and drinking like nah no 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 i think adam saw that and was like, okay these guys are taking the piss they're taking the piss out of me they're starting to like and even dw flame i like him but he's been he's been sending a lot of like indirects towards adam anyway ever since they had that falling out he's been trying to big timing a bit so he thought you know what these guys are trying to assert control and dominance i need to remind them who's fucking boss and whose company this is all right all your shows get fucking cancelled you know what i mean changing the locks changing the emails like fuck all this shit because they were getting too comfortable, too comfortable. And again, I'm not really the fan of Adam Toyin 2 as a podcaster or a person, but his phrase, bad podcasting, is true. That shit was happening everywhere. Everywhere that he wasn't. Wherever a show, Any show that he wasn't present, the guys were taking the piss. Any show that he wasn't on, they were definitely taking the piss. Like, they were acting like, you know when like, um, you know when your boss is away, they're on holiday. Like, that's how they were acting. Like, the boss is on holiday, um, supply teachers in, you know, you know what I mean? Like, they were really acting like that. So, I'm not surprised that he uh, decided to clear the fucking deck. Trying to create another at the end of the day or another disconnected, if that counts, or whatever. You know, it's like, all that shit is dope. And it definitely has helped, you know, get us more views slash, like, you know, make the fans interested. But the truth is, is that the, the soap opera that comes with um, doing No Jumper News and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't benefit us that. Yo, you fucking cunt. You're the one that was pushing it. This is why people don't like this guy. He's now complaining about the soap opera and the reality TV real house husbands of fucking downtown LA vibe that they were fucking spewing out. And he was the one that was encouraging it with the titles of the clips the fucking thumbnails, the lineups on the shows to court controversy and get them to fucking butt heads and fight and shit and argue. Because think about it. When's the last time, when's the last time anybody shared a clip of somebody from No Jumper where they had like a really interesting interview, somebody gave a really interesting answer to a question, somebody shared a really interesting hot take about a certain topic in the news? Doesn't happen. Most of the clips that were shared on no jumper were like messy shit that involved like messy stuff or beef it was never like oh the host having you know the host are the host on no jumper are having some really interesting conversations about very difficult to broach topics right or they're you know really kind of throwing out like 
you know, different points of view about certain things that people have never really thought about. Like, nah, no real hot takes. It's all just beef. And he was the beef manipulator in fucking charge. And now he's saying, oh, that stuff doesn't benefit us. Oh, now you know, huh? Much. It certainly is like something to talk about for a lot of people. But like getting a bunch of clips up in the Reddit and shit doesn't really like do that much for us as a business. And really when I look at the guy that was mentioning the Reddit every single episode, the guy that was usually using the Reddit as a content generating machine, the guy that was using the Reddit as a fucking um, bickering and beef and instigating and machine, like a starting point to kind of get people hot and bothered and shit. A guy that was accused earlier on of manipulating the Reddit to kind of paint him in his favor until like, you know, the admin controls got taken away from people that are over there no jumper. Now saying that posting clips on Reddit doesn't benefit us. <sighs> this guy's full of fucking shit. In my life as a 40 year old man, it's like, I want to primarily be putting my time into things that are going to, uh, you know, be more productive. Even like this right here, talking on Snapchat. Like, I, I hate to break it to you, but sometimes when I look at how much I made on Snapchat for the day, I'm like, why is YouTube my focal point? Why am I uh, looking at my YouTube analytics multiple times a day? Oh yeah, so I heard that's a thing now. I heard now, I don't know why, I guess YouTube maybe, so I guess Snapchat might have had a new round of investment, but a lot of content creators are posting their shit on Snapchat because the splits are great over there. But I just think they just did that thing that most companies do. They raise a round of investment. They want to get a bunch of people on there, drive traffic. So they're probably paying people more than they probably should to secure them on the platform and to make sure that they have, you know, um, native or very bespoke only Snapchat content created on there. Then hope those inflated numbers will then allow them to get more investment down the line. That's what I think is happening. But a lot of people I've seen, a lot of like YouTubers especially, are doing a lot of their like BTS um, vloggy type of content on Snapchat and it's not ever exported onto YouTube it's only living on there so you have to kind of you know make it a bit of a destination thing and kind of drive the traffic there but you know Snapchat are kind of paying people very 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 well when I got this Snapchat shit going absolutely fucking crazy I don't know there's a lot of things I want to do in my life and it's like if I am just putting out a handful of podcasts per week and then doing the Jumbo show once per week having some of these other guys do interviews on my behalf like that's good enough for me I don't need to be producing five hours of content per week in order to and again he was only doing this to prove that he wasn't down bad that's the issue that i have with this guy it wasn't that he was doing those shows because he wanted to he was doing those shows to prove to everybody else that he wasn't that down bad when ad and tiro and all those guys left and he could recreate whatever they had with these new coasts of people and it proved incorrect obviously it proved incorrect because he was complaining about money with those guys and these guys are getting less views than those guys so how of course it wasn't making sense and also, I'm assuming he's getting tired of fearing for his life when he goes outside. <laughs> the view no jumper is a success. So, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to probably try to frame this as me uh, giving up or me being, you know, totally fed up with some of the hoes or some bullshit like that. That's not really the case. It's just a case of me wanting to sort of reprioritize and, and take a step back from producing like a huge amount of Hey, yo, big up real David, real Santos David. You will never be as big as him. You're a fucking hater. Yeah, man. Welcome to the hater fucking live stream. You know what I mean? Click the like down below if you're enjoying the hater live stream. We're only commentating on fucking Adam22 because we hate him and we want to be as big as him. Of course. Join, join us, brother. Join us. Thank you for coming along. Join us. Embrace the hate. Sip on the hate. Bathe yourself in the hate. Lie down on the hate. Eat the fucking hate. Make the hate a part of you. It is what it is. Content. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys uh, get it. Hopefully people won't go too crazy with spinning like weird narratives and implying that I said things in the... Okay, keep getting cut off. There's like no way in Snapchat to tell when you're going to get cut off unless you want to like have a pocket watch or some shit. Oh, but I thought Snapchat was so great. I thought they're paying so amazing. But the app functionality is a bit shit. Okay, cool. Great. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I know people are going to run with all kinds of narratives and be like, Adam fired the whole staff. Adam, like, is ending all of the no-jumper content, whatever. That's not the case at all. Why are you worried about the narrative? It's a good narrative. Even if you are firing all the staff, it's actually a good thing. I don't think anybody, even the guys that don't like Adam 22 are going to say, it's a good thing that he's cleansing all the shows that aren't working and focusing on one that are, and then just figuring out what to kind of reintroduce back. Because I have a feeling he's trying to, like, 
figure out what works and what doesn't. So with a bit more of a clearer schedule, with a bit more focus on just the small shows, the only shows he has available to him, which will be two, then maybe you can kind of build up from there, but you don't need to have so much shit on the wall. Let's just work with what we have and kind of go from there. But it's not a bad thing that the shows are cancelled. Even if you go on the Reddit, the Reddit is full of haters, right? Um, Real Santos, David will know that No Jumper Reddit, I'm on there all the time, is full of fucking haters. They fucking hate No Jumper. And even those guys are saying this is actually a good decision. BTW, it's hilarious to hear how MFs like him and Schultz talk without any brothers slash sisters around. You'd yeah, be yeah. forgiven for wondering which are the real voices. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never clocked that. Adam does a Adam does code switch, doesn't he? Adam does have a tendency to code switch. He does sound a, he's, he, no oh, by the way, no 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 NJ, you reminded me. Have you realized how different Adam twenty two sounds when he's like on a white podcast vis a vis like a black one? Have you heard that difference? <laughs> like when he goes on like a I don't know let's let's say like a fucking I don't know like a like one of those I don't know I can't think of but like a Bradley Martin or something have you heard that different he sounds like he's on those as opposed to when he's like around the homies the hammies exactly um but anyway uh, big up Angel Ranger what I was thinking about this is that this is actually a good thing so the fact that Adam is concerned about how people view it is weird because it doesn't matter how we view it. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's actually a good thing. I swear to God. This is just me kind of like doing what's right for myself in terms of my own peace of mind, as well as my own, uh, you know, ideas of what I want to be doing. Yo, big up Wolf, Wolfgang Rittner. Big up Wolfgang Rittner. I can see a reflection in your cool shades. You're watching lesbian porn. You're fucking hilarious. i got to be honest. I'm not sure about you guys if you guys agree with me in the stream chat. I've never really been into lesbian porn. I'm not sure about you guys, but you know how guys get off on like the idea of like two girls making out and shit? Doesn't do anything for me at all. You know how some guys get really excited about, oh, oh, like, pfft. does absolutely nothing for me. Like, I just see them as like two gay people. Like, okay, let them have their fun. But what is that? Why does I have to make my, my dick hard? Strange. But anyway, maybe I'm, maybe it's just me. With the rest of my life. And, and you know, I look at somebody who's my peer. Joel from MIA asked the fucking perfect question. Joel from MIA asked the perfect question. What perfect timing? You prefer gay porn? <laughs> touche. Touche, touche, touche. You're like a Sean Cotton. We don't need to make it about Vlad every time, but I look at Sean Cotton and say cheese. Say cheese, very popular channel popular business if you ask anybody who knows about what's going on in rap they'll tell you like say cheese is up there near the top of the pile in terms of just creating content that shifts the culture and everything but you know i look at his channel and i'm like this motherfucker sean putting out like one podcast a week maybe two like sometimes they'll put out podcasts like every two weeks whatever which is you know that's dope like you don't need to put out like a gigantic amount of content in order to be successful right so I think for me, from a now I'm in it. I'm in it for the storyline, guys. I'm always in it for the storyline. I'm a storyline. I'm a cinema cinematography type of guy. I'm a lighting type of guy. Writing type of guy. I look for. I, I read the end credits. I'm in the comments. That's me. From a business perspective, it just makes sense to make a little bit less content and focus on other areas of the business that are a little bit more profitable that might have uh, longer legs and everything like that to me the the business model of just taking a bunch of homies and putting them on camera together and just assuming that the fans are going to want to watch i don't know it, it might have made a little bit more sense like mid pandemic it might have made a little bit more sense five years ago, but uh -huh. it doesn't make that much sense. Exactly. Now. I think yeah, you exactly. see that with all sides of the media landscape. He's 100% right. He's 100% right, especially if the shows aren't focused. That's why I think you have to give Joe Budden credit. As much as I hate this new version of Joe Budden, it's great because they talk about things. They have topics. They have pre-production meetings. They don't talk over each other, right? It's a really nice set. The audio is always fucking impeccable. You know, big up Parks, even though he's a fucking piece of shit. Like, they clearly put effort into their show. And it kind of shows with how it's produced and how it's put out and what they talk about and the clips and how it's... Whatever. But I think these guys, this lazy, just turning all the mics and have the hammies 
as Duno would say, sitting on the couches talking shit doesn't work, especially when there's no structure or anything. Even Figmunity World, I'm sure some of you guys don't even, I don't watch it as much anymore. Um, even fucking um, Back on Fig, I don't watch as much anymore because they don't really have any topics. You know what I mean? I'd probably prefer to watch like Ace Boys and shit because at least they're going through topics and they've got an, a kind of a funnier cast of characters and the girls coming and there's a yam cam and shit. That's like a, it's like a little bit of a show in itself. It's right? so kind of like a, a ratchet late night show. But I think the standard, just turn on the mic to have people shit, talk shit in front of a microphone, that time is completely gone. Or you have to kind of actually put some effort into making that quality, that content good and making it high quality to some respects. Where like, you know, Complex did everyday struggle, didn't really work out in the long run. They ran into a whole bunch of problems that we don't need to get into, but the hosts asking for more money, the advertisers are hard to get, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they switched from Joe Budden to a different co-host didn't really work out the same way these are all problems that i basically have dealt with too where it's just it's a hard business to run and even if even if it was really cracking it still would not be that profitable it still would be a little bit tough to justify even though obviously like at a certain level it's good for the overall brand but it's mad he's saying all this shit when he's the one that did all this shit it's almost like he's trying to who's he trying to convince you're the one that made your fucking bed you got a lie in it now a little bit brother <laughs> it's so hilarious but yeah you know I, I know some people will have a hard time comprehending what i'm talking about and everything it'll definitely be a letdown for some of the people who really thrive on documenting the uh messiness on the no jumper platform but i think overall this is just this makes sense for me as a businessman and uh i feel kind of light and free as a result of making this decision so yeah because you get to keep all most of the money now of course you feel light and free because you're not having to fucking pay the invoices of 17 nondescript fucking goons who say about 17 words during a two-hour podcast and refuse to talk about gang politics because it's messy, refuse to get messy because of gang politics, and just usually are too cool for fucking school. You don't need a type of character. You need mess. You need Holy hell. STF you about it already, Adam. <laughs> Me thinketh he does protest too much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. I didn't know. I didn't know there were so many people that watch my stream that don't like Adam Twenty Two. I I don't have that much of a much of a reaction against him, for better or worse. I think he's a bit of a bozo. If anything, I'm probably in the camp of people that thinks he probably needs to get punched in the face. But I don't really have whatever in it. I just think it's funny to kind of watch him from afar. But a lot of people in the stream definitely don't like the guy. It's funny to see this. I'm not gonna lie. Big up Austin Casey. You join them. The company of NJ Ranger and a few others who fucking hate him. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Same bro. I prefer MFM threesome corn. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And I don't know what MFM means, by the way. Okay? Okay? Abe? Abe? I don't know what MFM means, and I don't want you to clarify it either in the comments. I don't know what that means, and I don't want you to clarify it, okay? This is a pure and innocent stream. Don't bring that shit here. I don't know what that means, and I don't want you to clarify it. Okay. You're still going to see me having relationships with all the different hosts on camera to one level or another, but definitely some, some big changes coming down. No more No Jumper News, if you somehow missed that. Monday show, Wednesday show, Thursday show, all moved or all uh shut down tuesday show anyway i keep getting cut off but you guys get the idea that's a really funny filter isn't it that's a really funny filter uh yeah no jumper news over no jumper as a channel still going strong you will certainly notice probably like a decrease in overall views because that's another part of it is that i've just kind of decided that i don't want to i don't want to like spend my whole fucking life chasing after views you know, it's like the guy that built his whole platform and his whole sense of worth and would he's the one that started that whole fucking war. Because if you're going to know Jumper Reddit, part of the thing that makes it sometimes lame is sometimes the fans get into this thing of like posting screenshots of videos and comparing the views. Oh, look at Reconnected when they first left No Jumper. Now look at them. No, all this kind of like view beef, which I think is bad because most of the shows are suffering, I think. With the exception of maybe Mac Whopper and maybe um, could be um, Ace Boys and shit, 
I think most of those shows are suffering because they focus too much on the views. They're not trying to make fun shows anymore. They're not trying to be funny, entertaining. They're just focusing on the numbers. And that is actually hurting them in the long run. So he started this whole horrible trend the same way that academics started the horrible trend of people caring too much about first week numbers and not fucking critiquing music properly. And now he's like, oh, I don't care about the views. It's like, bruh. I'm doing well for myself. I got a nice life for myself. I'm proud of the content that I've been creating and that other people have been creating on my channel. But as far as just like always trying to recapture the view counts that we were getting during the pandemic and shit, it's just, that's not really what I need to be doing with my life. I got a couple of dope businesses. I got a lot of good stuff. There's other things I want to put time into. For me, a, a great week on No Jumper is like, we do the Tuesday show. I drop maybe like five, six interviews that I've done. Drop probably like a handful of interviews that uh, the other hosts have done. And we're good. I think that makes sense for me at this point in my life. So uh, appreciate everybody who watched this. Appreciate all the No Jumper fans. Rogue Game Forever. I love you guys. Uh, content will be getting a little bit more focused. Okay, man. There you got it. You heard it from the man himself. Like I said before, I think it's a good decision in the long term. I think No Jumper was too bloated. There was too many random people that don't need to be on there on the platform. Most of it is Adam22's fault because I think he was trying to prove to people that he wasn't hurting or down bad when all those other guys left. AD, T-Rail, Duno, um, you know, pun, uh, not pun, but he wasn't part of it, but you know, uh, Blasey, uh, House on all those dudes. He was trying to make sure that he could kind of look like he was okay, especially after he had that little depressive period where he went away for his honeymoon and kind of went ghost. He came back on some demon time shit and thought, no, I'm big 22, I'm big 16. I'm going to prove to everybody that I'm not hurting. Here's a bunch of shows for all these fucking shitty hosts that didn't really go anywhere. But along the way, he threw enough shit on the wall that he did find some things. He, find that, he found out that or my suspect is a decent enough host. Although he's hated on the Reddit, I don't mind him. He found out, he found Sharp, who I think is also a decent host. And if anything, Sharp deserves a lot of credit because I think he was, he held down that platform or that channel during that whole beef and um, kind of stayed loyal, kind of kept people coming on the streams, reined up the numbers. Now he's obviously fallen off, but I think he found out that Sharp is good. Um, He kind of found, oh, I guess he kind of, you know, honed and worked with Flacco and now Flacco has become a little bit of a mainstay there there was a period of time where everyone was trying to run Flacco off of No Jumper now he seems to be an integral part of the platform especially in their messy drama-ish kind of period he seems to be somebody that's willing to kind of stir the pot and get things going and play that kind of content over everything kind of lane so that kind of works out um, I think who else has been kind of good there the reintroduction of Lush coming back to No Jumper has been good although kind of pathetic and although a, a big you know 40 plus year old loser I think as an employee he's obviously a good fit for No Jumper Compa Raider has been a crazy addition but also beneficial um, and that's basically it and obviously the No Jumper news as a thing I think also works so there's been some things that have come out of it that have been a good thing overall but I think the idea of giving everyone a show and almost having it like a weekly programming thing was always dumb, in my personal opinion. I never understood that they had so many nonsense shows. They should just focus in on a couple and kind of go from there. It should be really, if you think about it, No Jumper should be really focused around music and news or interviews and music kind of thing, right? And in a weekly thing, you should probably have a weekly show where you review people's mixes and songs and shit and videos. People love all that shit, right? Um, sending in their clips and shit under the proviso that they might get signed or get fucking seen somewhere. That's quite a good thing. So keeping that show is done and maybe having some sort of like news show, that's also be a good idea, but not with a, 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 ran, a big cast, maybe just two people or three people max. And that's basically it. And of course, keeping one kind of, you know podcast show thing for the week where they can kind of review all the big topics and kind of have a check-in with each other blah 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 that's it you don't need anything more than that and i can't understand why you know he tried to do more than that when obviously i think the his main you know weakness is his leadership qualities he's not a real good leader anyway he's not a really good manager anyway i don't think so either he might be a good visionary um he might have ideas um, he might be able to put him in action but I think the day-to-day -day managing of that platform is not a good he can't do it um, and clearly these people don't think they want to hire him because that's something as well I never understood if you're going to run a network why not hire somebody to manage the network not somebody you already work with but an external person to come in and manage the running of the network so guys to recap I'm definitely doing well 
No jumper is not hurting. Yeah, exactly. I'm doing this because I'm rich. I promise. It's totally exactly. not to save money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big up Austin Casey. That was my final point to end it with. Like, in the end, as Austin Casey said, my final point before Austin Casey came in with a fucking hammer, my final point was, in the end, this is only happening because no jumpers bleeding money. They got that brand new spanking head office, right? That HQ. That No Jumper HQ, was it? No Jumper. Let's see if I can get, if there's a picture of it. Because that HQ was fucking lovely. No Jumper head office. Remember they, they, they moved into this really amazing, luscious fucking warehouse space. $5 million warehouse space, right? So look at this place. Like, I'm not going to play the video, but look at that fucking space. That is huge, right? looks very shiny it looks like a startup production type of platform and he probably bought that place under the proviso he's going to have all those shows still there adt on all those guys then they left soon after so you have to pay the lease of this fucking studio that's a lot of fucking money plus everybody's fucking hosting fee i bet you his week his monthly outgoings were crazy so something had to give which is why we have you know those shows fucking cancelled basically that's basically it if you think about it you know when you kind of whittle it down that's why that show got cancelled so anyway let's see how it kind of transpires let's see how everything transpires but so far that's the news courtesy of mr adam 22